Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Whitehawk 26RK travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camp experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. First thing I want you to take into consideration when parking is your slide. I've already opened it up so you see how much room you got. Uh, you might want to measure that or get a good eye for how much room you'll need to make sure that slide can come in and out unimpeded and preferably nothing hanging over top of it so you don't have to clean your slide off. Then I want you to think about where your water and electricity hookups are. Your power is going to be all the way at the rear of your off camp side and your water will be just ahead of the slide on your off camp side. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you've unhooked your hitch, first thing you're going to do is level your unit. Now you do have a power tongue jack here. Simply lower or raise the unit to your level. I do recommend with your slide closed, measure where the middle of your unit is. Go ahead and put a uh, stick on level on the side and have somebody watch that and tell you when your unit's level. Now you also have a docking light for this. And should you need lose power, there is a hole for this manual hand crank. Simply set that in there and without power, you can raise or lower your tongue jack. Now once you got your unit level, next thing you do is stabilize the unit. On all four corners of your unit, you have stabilizing jacks. Hand crank, three quarter inch socket on the end, crank to the right to bring them down. You can use a drill gun or an impact driver on these, run it down in just a couple seconds, but they go down pretty quick. I do recommend jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Uh, you're going to better distribute the weight. You do have a 10% off coupon. Go ahead and use that in the store and pick up a four pack of jack pads. Now remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So once you're unit's level, you're only going to want to run these down until they're taunt. Run down all four corners, walk back around and make sure you haven't lifted any, haven't changed your levelness. Do not use your power tongue jack with your stabilizing jacks down. Get all four, cor all four corners ran down. Got our unit level and stable. Let's go ahead and hook our power up. At the back of the unit, at the end of your long cord, is where your power goes in. Let me show you real quickly how these new ha handles work. They go in at an angle. Wiggle it in and turn it to the right. You'll see a green light to know that you have power. And then secure it with your black washer. Now at the end of your 30 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110, there is a 30 to 110 adapter that comes in your convenience pack. Got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. City water connect. Right next to your outdoor shower. Open this up, first and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You always wanna use this when putting water in your city water connect or your black tank flush when you're leaving the campsite. Hook up your water pressure regulator, hook up your hose, but don't turn our hose on yet. Let's go find your hot water heater. Here's located over on the campsite. 
excuse me, yours is located on the back of the unit. All right. All we're going to do at this point is open this up and make sure we return our drain plug. You may have left it out the last time you were camping, draining your hot water heater. Throw a little plumber's tape around that and secure that in there. Once that's in there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn on your hose. If your hose has been on for a little while, you're gonna to come to this uh, pressure release valve. You're gonna pull up on this. It's gonna release air out of the lines. Eventually, you'll get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here. Once you do, shut that off, and then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. Now let's say we're going camping and we're not gonna use city water, we're gonna use potable water. So for dry camping, just to the right of your main door is your potable water. Simply fill this with a hose. Uh, you don't need to use your water pressure regulator on this. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two, on the inside where you can check your tank levels. You can hold your fresh tank button down and that'll tell you when that's full. Again, burp your hot water heater the same way. Get the air out of the lines. Light it from indoors. Just remember, when using potable water, is when you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. It's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp. We've got power and water on. Let me walk you around the outside of the unit, show you a few other things. Of course, you have these nice solid steps on here, step above the call. Your outdoor speakers and your big awning. I'll run that out in a moment. Your outdoor kitchen. Open this up to just hold up with magnets. Bring your grill out, and you do have a LP cord here. One end will attach here, and the other right there to your quick connect LP. Remember to unhook it when leaving. Do have an outdoor fridge that plugs in. Little prep area here. Sink. And cutting board. You have a couple of 110s out here. Cable, if you want to set a TV out here, it'll clamp right on there. There's a clamp inside in storage for you. Your bedroom door. Your big pass-through storage. I also want to note there is a, if you unsnap this here, there is a table that you guys can set up outside. You saw your hitch work. There's the hose for the spray port that I'll show you when we get to it. Lighting for in here. Cover for your propane tanks. Speaking of your propane, it does have a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. It says red, I turn the gas on, turns green. Check your battery post now and then. Make sure the terminals are connected. You are bouncing the house down the road. Things wiggle loose. And your indoor storage in here, more lighting. This is your battery disconnect. This will shut off all the battery power to the unit. That'll shut off all the lighting inside. Uh, that'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide detector. Your black tank flush. Flushing your black tank when leaving the campsite. Over here below your city water connect and outdoor shower is your black and gray holding tanks. We'll dump them when leaving the campsite. Wipers, they call these wipers. Um, wiper seals, they have a wiper fluid you can attach to those. That uh, adds to the longevity of the life of them. Going around here, your slide closed, oh yeah, actually. If you slide closed, you'll be able to get to this low point drain when leaving the campsite. Right there. And at the back where your power is, is your cable hookup. This is access to the back of your fridge. A hood vent for your microwave. This is a furnace heat release. So if you're running your furnace, steer clear of this, it'll get rather warm. Your unit's also prepped for a Furion backup camera. Purchase you can device from our purchased from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle giving you a backup camera. Ladder to go up and check your seams. 
Uh, check them about twice a year, beginning and end of the end of the season. Caulk as needed. Low point drain. Here's where you drain all your main waters. The first one I showed you is if you're using potable water. Well, it about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. First and foremost, make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Just to the right of that is that 12 volt carbon monoxide detector I was talking about. So this is always running off 12 volt. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, nothing charging your battery, go ahead and use that battery disconnect so this doesn't run your battery down while you're out. So those are to the right as you come in the door. To the left is your control panel. I'll start at the top. Here's where you turn on your water heater. You can use your water heater or your fireplace. It's uh, set up so you can do one or the other. Down here, control panel. Here's where you check your batteries. Fresh tank, that's the one I told you you can hold in until when you're using potable water when it's full. Make it where you can see it. Black and your gray tank's all empty. Down here's your living room lighting, security lighting and awning lighting. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to gas and your water heater if you're hooked up to electricity. You slide in and out. Your awning extend. I'm gonna run that out real quick. Right in the kitchen, you do have that little pop-up USB port and 110. A self-explanatory microwave. Coming back here, get your awning out. You only want to run that out until that white flap, which is wet from them washing it right now. Once that white flap falls all the way down and you see your black, that's when you know that you're out far enough. There it goes, now it's falling. You may have to, if it's ever wet, you may have to roll it in and out a couple times. So that's how far you want to run that awning out. Back over here in the kitchen, your stove does have a light and a fan. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. You have a panel light. Simply turn this to, to light, hit your spark, and there's your flame. Same thing on the oven. Turn this to spark, use this lighter, and it lights down there. Don't need to light a pilot light down there anymore. Coming down. Underneath your stove is your access panel to your fuses and breaker box. Looks like you got a handful of 15s in there. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Come over here to your Dometi fridge. Your controls are in the freezer. Push this in, we are on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it'll go to gas. If you want to dry dock and just do gas, hold that button in and you'll be just gas. Over here, change the levels one, two, three, four, five. Shut that off. Your table, those legs remove. Simple process, lift the table up, legs remove, set the table on these lips, bring in your back cushions for a bed. Over here, your seating, they are what I call a parachute pull. Just reach inside there, pull on the parachute cord and your recliner comes out. Recliners also have heat, a light for your cup, and massage. Four different, three different levels. Cup holder, good lighting here. Do you have a lot of individual touch lighting? You can go through and just individually shut them off. Your TV, all the controls are over here on the right. I can pick up very many stations here in the building, but let's return that on it. Yeah, bad reception in here. Anyway, down here's your Furion sound system. Dual zoned. Play your music indoors, outdoors, or both. USB, Bluetooth compatible. Coming down here to your fireplace. They're not just for looks anymore. Um, when it's cold in the morning or in the evening, 
instead of using up your gas turn on your fireplace and get the heat going in off this it'll warm it up in here in no time come over here on the wall here's your thermostat modes off auto fan auto cool furnace just change your temperature over here and shut it off coming into your bathroom lots of lighting and fan more lighting maintain your plumbing just keep an eye on your plumbing behind your toilet come through to your bedroom Some lights on in here it's better so back you got 110 next to the bed here 110 the USB port here but I also want to mention back in these cubby holes you have another 110 it's a great place to put uh, your TVs for charging. There is a bracket back here here for 110 and cable. There's cable 110 there. You have a hand open vent here with exhaust. Same thing in the bathroom. Hand crank open exhaust fan. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. So what I like to do is shut off the individual living room lights. Because then I can see everything that I need to go through and shut off. Our lighting in here and our bedroom lighting. Now all the lights are off. Secure some doors, lock that. Secure that door. I'll come back and turn the lights back on. So first, I want you to make sure that nothing is gonna impede this slide from coming in. Of course, make sure your fridge is closed, any of the drawers are closed. Come up here and hit retract for your slide out. As you see, it shifts up from the bottom. That's where the controls are. It takes a second and the slide will be in. One more thing before I leave here. Your 110 with USB or 110 with GFCI reset is just below the sink. All right, we've got that in. Let's shut off our living room lights and head out of the unit. So, bringing this step up, first thing you need to do is make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it. Grab it, lift it up, use the handle if you want, set it inside the door. Pull back on this and that'll lock that in there. Close your exterior door, lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn this handle. Come around to the back of the unit, hook up the city water, open up both those drains. Come here to your hot water heater and you're gonna open this right up. Just get that where it'll stay open. All your water is going to drain out of there. Once you've released all that and there's no more coming out, you can close that and pull your drain plug. Don't pull your drain plug before releasing this. Make sure you lower that and close your hot water heater. Go around, bring up all of your leveling jacks. Unhook our cable. Unhook our water. If you are using potable water, you will, sorry, I forgot where it was, you will dump that drain right there. If you dry, dry docking, that'll empty your tanks. And unhook our power to head up to the dump station. At the dump station. 
take the sewage hose, comes your convenience pack. Hook it up here. First thing to pull, black holding tank. So pull your black handle. After it sounds like it's no longer draining, you're gonna come up here, leave that handle open, and go to your black tank flush. Again, water pressure regulator. Hook that up, hook a hose up, and turn it on. Again, with your black tank open. What that's gonna do is it's gonna wash out your black tank and get all that nastiness out of there. Once you've ran that for a good five minutes, close your black handle, unhook your hose, your water hose at the black tank flush, and pull your gray handle. Gray handle is gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and showers. It's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you. Bring your sewage hose right here to your bumper. And conveniently store it inside. Great place for your sewage hose. Again, thank you guys for your purchase. We hope you enjoy this white hog for many years to come. Happy camping.